Hey you guys, today I'm going to do Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 8, Episode 4. Um, boring guest episode. Like, I was so happy that I rather, I watched the Soul Train Awards before I watched this. Because other than that, I would have been mad. But anyway, Kenya, being Kenya, being shady like usual. But she's in her neighborhood. So she decides to go and see Sheree because she says she's seen Sheree's car. I said, yeah, you just want to take the cameras over there or whatever. But she calls Cynthia, telling her that she was going to see Sheree. She go over there, and she's telling her, like, you know, how her house is really nice. And it did. It looked really, really nice from the inside. But Kenya was being shady and shit, trying to run up in that girl's house. That's why she got motive that the doors was locked. I'm like, Sheree ain't stupid. Sheree see these cameras. She ain't gonna let y'all up in there so y'all can shade her a little bit more. But, um, so, you know, she running all around Sheree's house. I was like, girl, you got too much time on your hands trying to shade this girl. But whatever, they run to the back, and like I said, she still got a nice-ass house. So, Kenya invites her to a party that she's going to throw on the beach for Cynthia. Um, you, I don't know what it was for, but whatever. But she said, that's cool. She'll go. Then they did a stupid-ass bet about who house would be finished first be by Christmas. And I'm sitting there like, y'all dumb. Like, y'all dumb. But, okay. Because, I don't know. Like, Kenya, your house was already built. So all you got to do is, well, she said she had to tear some shit down. But I'm sitting there like, girl, this is the dumbest bet ever. But whatever. Y'all ain't got that much time on y'all hands. Um... What else happened? Oh, Portia and Phaedra, they go to this little kinky-ass store to get her an outfit so she can FaceTime Duke. I'm like, okay, whatever. I, I didn't care. They was um, talking about setting Phaedra up on a date because Apollo been in jail for a year. And I'm sitting there like, but did they break up? This is why Apollo was talking about her last year. But whatever. Maybe they got some kind of arrangement saying that she could see other people. They broke up. I don't know. Because one minute they cool, next minute they ain't. One minute she married, the next minute they getting... A, I don't care. But they was getting kinky clothes for some damn body. Um, Candy and Don Juan on the phone. She's four and a half months pregnant. She got to take... You know, she got to take some time and, like, kick back or whatever through this pregnancy because she's high risk or whatever. So, they get off the phone because he was talking about her. And then Cynthia comes over to Zink. And then they were talking about, you know, they basically was just talking about their similarities and shit like that. And, you know, pregnancy and thyroid and how Candy is high risk and she needs to take it easy. And Cynthia was basically telling her, yes, you need to take it easy. Like, girl, you can't do be superwoman and you trying to have this baby at your age and your health problems. So then she tells Cynthia about her opening up a restaurant, her and Todd opening up a restaurant. She really don't want to do it, but since Todd was supportive of her in the play, she's going to be supportive of him, and they're going to do this restaurant thing. It's going to be a family restaurant. So Cynthia was like basically telling her, it's a lot of work when it comes to the family restaurant. Your man ain't going to be at home. Like Peter ain't never at home. He always... You know, out of town, working on that business and stuff like that. Then it seemed like she just kind of had a meltdown. Like, she just needs to vent somebody to somebody and just, <laughs> that girl is going through. I swear, because every time she talked to somebody, she just break the fuck down and tell them how she just ready to give up on Peter. She ready to get this divorce happening because she ain't going to be in no damn relationship that she don't see herself happy in. And I was like, I'm not mad at Cynthia when it comes to that. Like... It be bitches out here be sitting in relationships 30, 40 years and knowing they wanted to be gone two years after the marriage. So, I mean, I can't be mad at her saying that she ready to bounce. I mean, I'm just saying people sit in relationships because of what other people might say. And Cynthia like, fuck all that. And I, I can't really be mad at her. I don't want no woman to just sit there and be miserable in some shit that she don't want to be in. Like... I mean, I, I'm with the old school ways of, you know, you work on your marriage and you fight for your marriage and shit like that. But at the same time, 
I don't want no woman to just sit there and be unhappy and her man out there doing whatever either. So, hey, I can't be mad at her on that. Um, Phaedra and her kids have a play date with Kim and her kids. And Kim had me cracking up. Because, I mean, I get it. When it comes to Kim, as far as the mommy situation, I totally relate to her. Because, like I told y'all, if I... Besides me doing YouTube and stuff like that and me trying to get my brand off and working and stuff like that, my my kids, it's my entertainment, my life. That's all I kick it with. I might go to the club, but it's always to support somebody else. It's always like on some business type shit when I go to the club. So, um, like, it's I seldomly go to the club and turn up because it's some fun shit happening. It's always me going to support somebody, going to see somebody, whether it's a DJ. I need to go and watch and see if he can play good for me to support or, or her support. Um, so I get it when it comes to Kim. Like, your kids are your life. and Because I'm the same way. I don't let my kids go spend night over nobody house like that. I got to really, really, really trust you for my kids to come spend night over your house. Or you even have a play date without me. Um, so I get it when it comes to that. But I get where... This was the only time in history, probably, that I liked Phaedra. Probably the only time in history that I probably liked it, Phaedra. Because Phaedra was giving her some real ass advice, like, you need some friends, you need to be a have you time. She was telling her they need to get out and have not you to this time, but us time. And I was like, I'm digging that. I'm digging to have another woman come in and be like, girl, you need to just do you. Maybe go get your hair done, your nails done. Just have, go get you some Starbucks. I don't know. So I, I'm, I'm with that of oh, the woman uplifting another woman and telling her to take some time out for herself. So kudos to you, Phaedra, for the first time. Might, might not get that again. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just saying I, that was my first time ever agreeing with her. And I was shocked. Um, portion is dumbass FaceTime. I'm like, girl. So she texts Duke talking about call me. And this nigga never calls her after she get dressed up in her little diamond beaded whatever bra. And sat there forever, ever, ever, ever. I was like, damn. But this is what happens when you throw the draws real fast. And you try to rush them into your family. And... You don't know him. This is what happens when you just don't take the time out to know the dude and you throw him on fucking national TV because you want to have a storyline and a boyfriend. This is what happened. The embarrassment come follows. So she calls Phaedra and say how embarrassed she is and how stupid she looked and all this kind of stuff. And I was, and it's another time I was like, okay, Phaedra trying to finally. You know, being real with her and being a friend and telling her some shit she probably don't want to hear. But, bitch, please. Pick, girl, please. I, I, girl, grow up. That's all I can say. Grow the fuck up. You should have been doing this dumb ass shit a long time ago. Not now. I'm sorry. Um, Kenya. Okay. All the girls are headed to the boat in different cars. You got Cynthia, Kenya, and Cynthia friend Tammy in one car. And then in the bus, you got Candy, Kim, and, the, and they was in the um, bus talking for a little while. And then joined in by Portia and her homegirl, Shamia. So in Cynthia and them car, they're talking about how Tammy knows Sheree because of Bob... Uh, her ex-husband is homegirl's best, they best friends, and how she felt like Sheree was a gold digger when she was with Bob, and yada, yada, yada. I didn't give a damn, I was like, okay, she, she talking about she don't know what shade is, but, well, maybe she didn't know what shade is, and she was just telling the real, and just being honest, that wasn't just really being shade. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Shade is kind of throwing subliminals and shit like that. So, um... Yeah, so I, I that that lady was weird to me. Then in the other car, I was so I don't know because Regine 
Kim Fields went way out the window for me when they first showed her on this scene. She keep being tootie to me. So this conversation was very awkward to me to see her having a sex talk with Candy. They were talking about business and how she liked Candy as an entrepreneur and stuff like that. So they start talking about the bedroom Candy. And she was talking about how she's not that experienced and how loud she is with her husband and and how she don't wear no panties. And I was so uncomfortable because I'm like, this is too I'm watching. I don't need to watch. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not approved when it comes to sex talk. I'm approved when it comes to seeing my childhood favorites. <laughs> just talk about that. Especially when you still kind of will watch reruns of the show. It was just awkward to me. But she grown. And I mean, I can't be... I mean, they was having girl talk. And it was really cool to see her coming out of her comfort zone. To have a talk like that with Candy. Because Candy was like, damn, shit, I learned a lot about you in 20 minutes. And I was like, you and the rest of the world. I'm, I was just shocked. But I was here for it because she need that. She need that girl's talk with some girls because she's she a little touch. She a little weird, but okay. Um, Portia and her friend on the way there and... Uh, oh no, when they when they get on the bus, they all start talking and Candy pissed me off. Candy pissed me off because she messy as fuck. Like, bitch, just own up you the messy one. Just own up that you the fucking messy one. Because Candy went back and told them girls about Cynthia conversation with her and how she planned on divorcing Peter and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, that's fucked up. That is fucked up. First of all, you know she don't get along with Oh, dumb, dumb, like that. So that was written, and she don't know Kim feels like that. So for her to put her business out there when she came to your house and had a personal conversation with you, I felt like Candy was really fucked up, and I want her to own up to that bitch being messy as fuck. Because, bitch, if you wasn't pregnant, I would have said, bitch, need to be slapped, because that was all the way wrong. Um... Anyway, they all get to the boat. They got these shirtless bartenders. You know, she did it up for them. You know what I'm saying? She got them pedicures. Just a really, really nice boat, boat ride. But when she saw Shamia, she was like, what the fuck? Like, why is she here? This bitch already shaded me at my party. Now this bitch is shading. I mean, coming to my thing. Then Shamia was talking. Ugh, I just don't like her. It's something about her. I'm just like, why is she here? And then they were like, um, Candy was like, did you invite any more people? And she was like, shit, I didn't invite her. And people felt like that was wrong of Kenya to say. But I'm like, bitch, no, it wasn't. The bitch shaded her at her party. And why would she come? Like, if we, I don't know you. First of all, I felt like Portia was wrong and should have apologized. Come on. Well, I said Phaedra and I coming. I didn't see the problem. No, bitch, it's a problem. And I felt Kenya like, bitch, if you invited, you don't invite somebody else. And especially if you don't tell the host that you bring in somebody else. I thought they was fucking out of line. And I felt like, why is everybody looking at Kenya's side eye? Because I would have did the same thing. Like, bitch, you paying for yourself? Like, you got something on your pedicure? Like, no. Like, she wasn't invited and she... We could tell she don't like her, and we could tell she came to be messy towards Kenya. Ain't nobody fucking stupid. I don't care how messy Kenya is. Kenya's a fucking castmate. This bitch ain't. I just don't understand why they keep bringing this thought, like, for real. I don't get why she keep being on here. Um. So what else happened? Because I wrote notes this time. Kenya, okay, they get the pedicure. They were talking about throwing shade. And Kenya throws shade at Kim Fields talking about she was 50. And Kim Fields got a little offended and was like, no, bitch, I'm 46. Don't even play me like that. Like, we just a couple of months apart. Don't even play me. But talking about I was something pretty in a magazine, whatever she said. And I'm sitting there like, girl, everybody know you. Your mom and your sister still got it. Y'all all still look alike. Y'all st all still look young. I'm surprised she caught it. I'm just saying. Um, then they start talking about Kenya and saying, okay, Kenya had made an announcement about her all happy all the ladies are there and that they're there for Cynthia. And Cynthia's her new best friend. Like she like, you know, Cynthia's my best friend. Everybody looking like, huh, when the fuck that happened? But I'm like, 
Well, that is her new best friend because that's the only person she get to hang with. I'm just saying that's the only person been having her back, like, really. So, but y'all killed me with y'all y'all best friends type shit and y'all ain't even been knowing each other that long. Don't really hang with each other outside of filming. Like, whatever. Um, Sheree walks up. And somebody introduced every, I think it was Kenya, was like, oh, this is this person, this is this person. And she was like, okay, I know Tammy or whatever. And I was like, okay, I'm waiting on this conversation to get started. But it didn't. So then you had um, Tammy. Oh, my God. She's a weird one. Like, fucking weird. She had to talk with Portia and Candy about her son and how y'all heard my son's song. And she started singing. And they looking like, no, bitch, no. Then she said, Bob was managing him and i'm like i thought he was an ex-football player now he's a rap manager I, whatever she was trying to set up a meeting with candy candy was feeling awkward then she that lady was weird she was really weird she started talking about her they start asking about her husband and she was like my husband is white my husband is not c white and i'm sitting there like my he's happy all the time and i'm sitting there like bitch you need some medication but i was felt candy and portia i would have walked the way too like this is a little awkward for me and bitch you ain't my friend so deuces like she was weird then she just out there by herself <laughs> she just weird then she jumped in the water but then once she jumped in the water, it kind of made everybody else go out there and jump in the water. And they started, they was having fun. They was twerking. They was having fun because Shamil was like, this is supposed to be your party and all this kind of stuff. They was taking shots. They was really having fun. Then all of a sudden, it kind of went left because it was because Kenya, I don't know how the conversation kind of went, but I know, oh no, Kim. Kim, you're on the boat with a lot of women having drinks, and you grab a book to go read. Told y'all I don't know why she on this show, but okay. But anyway, um, <laughs> I just really don't understand why she on this show. You own the show with a gang of drunks. This is all they do is drink and argue, and you bring a book and Tupperware. It wasn't just that you brought a book. You brought Tupperware of some shit. Ain't no kids on the boat. Are you allergic to some shit? <laughs> I just was like, why does she got Tupperware in her purse? Why is she there? Okay, whatever. So anyway, like I said, they were jumping all off the boat. Next thing you know, they was talking about attitudes and it come in. Oh, she thanked, can you thank them? Because they kept, that little girl kept throwing shade about water and supplies and whatever and then they start talking about Kenya was like I'm so happy because they was telling her that she threw a better thing on the boat that, making up from her party and she was like I'm glad that you guys had a great attitude about the party you guys still stayed and stuff like that Shamir's still st over there throwing shit and Kenya's hearing the shit and then Kenya was saying something about um Everybody was positive except Shamia. And Shamia was like, well, I just said things in your face that I was saying behind your back or whatever. And I'm sitting there like, bitch, you shouldn't have been saying anything. You weren't even at an invite. You shouldn't have said anything. But whatever. You were trying to get your camera time. Then she called Kenya Miss America, knowing that would get under her skin. Like, just being ignorant and then Kenya was like well you know I'm about to have the captain escort you off the boat and everybody looking at Kenya like Kenya wrong but I'm like this girl came on the boat to be disrespectful yeah Kenya was like you either get escorted off or you jump off like either or and I was like our bitch get pushed off because I didn't understand and then Candy you only take enough for her because that's your homegirl but your homegirl was out of fucking line she shouldn't have said nothing and then you gonna Candy gonna go at Kenya talking about Kenya was shading her from the time she came on the boat and I'm like no Kenya just said she wasn't fucking invited so I didn't see nothing wrong with what Kenya was saying. But Kenya was mad, going to say something to the captain. So they tell her Cynthia to go get her best friend. So next thing you know, they, she was saying something about, I'm not fake best friends or something like some people all up on the boat is. And I guess, I don't know if she was talking about uh, 
What's her name? Dumbo. Portia and Phaedra or Portia and her home. I didn't know who she was talking about. But you could tell Cynthia was feeling some kind of way. And then next thing you know, Portia was like, whatever, bitch. And then Cynthia just went out the handle about, don't call me no bitch. Don't disrespect me. And then I'm going to say it like this. I get it. I get it. Because they were calling each other bitches all day. But Portia did kind of say that like a whatever, bitch. Like, don't even start, bitch. Whatever. But maybe she didn't understand the way she said it. And so she was apologizing for the way she said it. But the way Cynthia went off the handle, I was like, girl, calm down. Like, you only going at her because you think she the weak one. That's the only reason why Cynthia is going after Portia. Because she think Portia is the weak one. I'm sorry. She would have talked shit to maybe, maybe Phaedra. But it, she wouldn't have never jumped the way she did at Phaedra. She damn sure wouldn't have did it at Kenya or Candy. That's not without uh, Nene being her homegirl. That's for damn sure. So I was like, girl, calm your ass down. Sit down. Go go buck up at Peter. Because that's who your frustration is with. And you trying to take it out on this little girl. It was just stupid. And then they kind of broke them up. And then Cynthia went to one part of the boat. And then they was telling, getting on Portia, telling her to say sorry. And she was like, for what? I don't think I did nothing wrong. And like I said, you probably don't think you did nothing wrong. It's probably the way you said it. And that's the way they feel. They felt like, okay, you probably didn't do nothing wrong. But you know it rubbed her a certain way. It hurt her feelings or whatever. Just go apologize for her feelings being hurt. Portia tried to go apologize. Next thing you know, they arguing back and forth. They putting each other, hands in each other's face. First of all, that was too much hands in the face without somebody getting popped. I'm just saying. That's between my friend anyway. So, mm -mm. all that, mm -mm. But next thing you know, they doing hand gestures. And next thing you know, we saw Portia go over Cynthia and was like, no, bitch, no, you didn't or some shit. They rest, hand wrestling, I don't know, kicking in the air. The camera's... Wouldn't let us see everything that happened. I don't know. But that's my review. I don't even know how this ended up 20-something minutes because it wasn't that good of a show. But, yeah, that was it. Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 8, Episode 4. Tell me what you thought about it. I thought it was a dumbass argument, a dumbass fight. I bet you they're not going to really show us what really happens next week. It's going to be all chopped up and stupid. But, yeah, tell me what y'all think. I'm about to go try to... Rewatch the Soul Train Award so I can see the beginning half because I only saw the end or well, the second half. So I'm finna go try to do it. I'm gonna do a review on my highlights. That's it, just highlights. And um, yeah, follow me on all social media sites by the ghetto view T H A, not T H E. Still non stop November, so we still going. Check out all my non stop November people. Just put hashtag non stop November and I'll talk to you guys later. All right, peace out.